In a poll, I asked you guys what you thought about me doing a video benchmarking a higher clock Core 2 Duo against lower clocked Core 2 Quad, and you said go for it, so here we go. In this video, we're going to compare an E8500 against a Q6600. The E8500 is a dual core clocked at 3.16 with a 1333 frontside bus. It was introduced about a year after the Q6600. The Q6600 uses two dies similar to a Pentium D, so the cache is divided up between them. Four mags on one die, four mags on the other. The E8500 has a total of six mags of L2 cache on its single die. So will the larger amount of L2 cache per core and its higher clock speed help it you know, keep up with the quad core? Let's find out. Passmark CPU benchmark shows the quad is having a higher average score. However, if you look closer, some tests are either very similar or the Duo has a higher score. In the memory test, the Duo wins, but that has a lot to do with its higher front side bus speed. In 7-zip, the quad finished about a minute and a half sooner. Now, one thing you'll notice in the screen capture is the compression ratio and size. It sometimes doesn't update completely at the end, but both files came out exactly the same. It's just a bug in the GUI. If you've made it this far, I'd like to just take a time out and ask if you wouldn't mind leaving me a like and subscribe if you haven't. It really helps out. Thanks. The Cinebench test was far closer than I, you know, ever even imagined it would be. The Duo finished only a minute and 15 seconds after the quad. For having two less cores than a quad and finishing only a minute later, that's impressive. Handbrake was a completely different story, though. Although not slow, the quad definitely won this one, finishing roughly 16 minutes sooner and rendered 5 FPS faster on average. For the YouTube playback tests, I disable all hardware acceleration in the browser, so the CPUs are doing all the work. I'll let you be the judge, but at 1080 by 60, both seem to play okay. There definitely were some drop frames, but both were able to pull it off pretty well considering the age of the chips. Personally, I think the quad did a little bit better though. In heaven, both scored about the same with the duo pulling ahead slightly. You'll notice that the quad averaged about a half an FPS lower. It also has a lower minimum and maximum FPS scores, but its scene changes were much smoother than the duos. In superposition, the duo once again pulled ahead, averaging about two FPS higher. Now two FPS isn't much, but the bigger difference is when you look at the minimum and maximum FPS for each. Unreal Engine 3 was much like GTA 4 and it was very CPU, I don't know, hungry. It would use up whatever you threw at it. However, even with it showing all fours being used heavily and completely maxing out the Duo, the Duo had about an average 16 FPS lead over the quad. Now with that said, both are rendering well over 100 frames per second, so 16 is nothing. But it would be something to brag about to your rich friend who had the Q6600. Need for Speed Most Wanted came out in 2005, so it was definitely something that would have been played on either one of these. Both tests ran well, however, once again, the Duo had the edge, averaging almost 10 FPS higher. One thing that I'm not sure about, though, is the average GPU usage. Both runs were done using exactly the same settings. However, the Duo run showed a larger GPU usage than the Quad run, but the Duo has a higher frame rate. I even went back while editing and re-ran both, swapping the CPU, and it happened again. I don't know why. If you have any ideas, let me know. Race Driver Grid came out in 2008, so again, something that would have been definitely played on these CPUs. This is a newer game and it seems that it takes advantage of the additional cores, but the difference isn't that great. The Quad won this round by about 10 FPS, but like before, what's 10 FPS when you're averaging around 150? GTA San Andreas was released in 2004. This game, unlike Vice City, was multi-threaded. However, it seems to only take full advantage of two and probably wasn't written with quad cores in mind. Both had similar average frame rates, but the duo scored about five FPS higher in the end. GTA 4 was released in 2008 and definitely was multi-threaded. In fact, as I'm sure you're aware, in the beginning it was coded so poorly that you almost needed a quad or an octa-core just to make the thing playable. The latest revisions are better, not great. Both CPUs did rather well and were again very similar in performance. According to the benchmark, the quad won this round by about 4 FPS. I ran the GTA 5 benchmark on both and, well, 
I can't really go by the scores that it recorded, because according to the benchmark, the duo scored higher than the quad. But look at it. The quad is far smoother and actually loads textures. So regardless of what it said, I'm giving this one to the quad. So I know what you're saying, and yes, here it is. I'll overclock the Q6600 to 3 GHz by increasing the front side bus to match the E8500 at 1333. As an example, here's Cinebench. Both the stock duo and the quad runs are similar, but the overclock quad is far faster. It finished in 8 minutes and 40 seconds versus the duo's 14 minute run. I also ran Y Cruncher on all three. Obviously, the overclock quad finished the quickest, but there was only about a 25% difference between the stock duo and the stock quad, so we can look at it a couple of ways. One is two additional cores and it's only a 25% difference, or we could say the fact that the duo was clocked a lot higher means that it was able to mostly keep up with the quad. Your choice. As far as the rest of the apps, the duo scored the lowest. But really, when you think about it, not by too much on average. Sure, the 7 zip test shows the quad owning the duo. Still, the duo rendered a respectable for its time 11 FPS and handbrake versus the quad's 16, and Cinebench was nearly tied. So it really depends on what you're doing. If anyone has any ideas on any other apps that I can benchmark, uh, please let me know. I want real apps, not synthetic benchmarks. I'm messing around with GIMP benchmarks currently, so maybe I'll use that in the future. As far as games, well, again... <laughs> it's even closer. Even in the games that take full advantage of the extra cores, really the CPU still came out very close. Many of us have always said for games, forget about all the additional cores, you need more speed than anything. And that seems to be true. That is, unless you're running GTA 4. DG Television Network said they had a feeling that there would be wildly different results. And I originally took that to mean that one CPU would be far better than the other. But now I think they meant each game or app would show wildly different results depending on how they use the threads. And if so, DG, you were right. And yeah, those friendly rivalries with friends about whose computer is better, and then it turned into whose car is faster. Man, life was so much easier back then. But now, a lot of the hero and someone somewhere will know that neither of you actually had the better CPU. They were both about the same in the long run. Thanks for watching, and please give me your input below in the comments. Let me know what I did right, and uh, what you'd like to see me do, and well, also what I'm doing wrong. I'll take everything into consideration, and if I can make it happen, I will. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.